I knew I had the vision of exactly what I wanted to do in in healthcare. I knew what it was. I knew what it looked like. What is up guys welcome back to my channel if you're new thank you for joining me and if you are not new thanks for coming back i'm dominique aka legally bomb and as you can tell from the title i'm just gonna be talking about manifesting and maintaining your happiness hold on please. Um, i'm just gonna be talking about maintaining and manifesting your happiness to get right into the video as you guys know and if you don't know maybe two um, years ago um i quit my job in kansas city missouri which i started working at once I graduated college. If you want to know more about why I quit and how I quit and all that, I'll link it and it's still on my channel. But when I quit my job, I kind of made it an internal mission to make sure that the next steps of my life involved me being happy because when I was in Kansas City, I spent so much of my time being unhappy. I had a health coach, she said, she suggested that I was depressed, but it was never clinically diagnosed, so I don't want to say that I was depressed because I don't take mental illness lightly at all. But she's a professional in, you know, in her own right, so I guess we could say that I was depressed, but that's neither here nor there. But since I was so unhappy during that time, it just became my personal mission to never be unhappy again. And so fast forward to after we quitting, came to Charlotte, like working at a my old part-time job from college which I was making literally pennies and peanuts but it was cool to be there it kind of reminded me of what it is that I like to do and that's interact with people that's something that I need in my everyday job responsibilities and responsibility I don't know how to explain it but that's a requirement for me personally some people can work by themselves and at a computer and you know be quiet I can't do that that didn't make me happy so it reminded me of um, what what makes me happy and it's interacting with people I think I've always been a people person um, ever since I was little my mom said I used to go to the grocery store and like say hey to random people and if they didn't say hey back I would have a problem but again um, just reminding myself of what makes me happy so I did appreciate that in that sense but where the manifesting and maintaining your happiness comes into it for me is maybe about so while I was working there I kind of was going back and forth about where I wanted to go with my life did I want to go back to school did I want to maybe pursue a career at that company but I also held on to the idea of me working in healthcare because I did go to school for healthcare management so I did still want to just I had never experienced working in the hospital working in a healthcare system so I did want to kind of scratch that itch, if you will. Before we moved back to Charlotte, I had been applying to jobs in Charlotte and they did include working at the healthcare system. If you live in Charlotte, or maybe it's, I just can speak from Charlotte, it's so hard to get in to, if you're not clinical, it's so hard to get into the healthcare system. Like you're literally probably not gonna go in, get in unless you know somebody and somebody is recommending you for the job. It's just super hard. I held on to that idea and I kept, you know, applying, but I wasn't getting it, but I still had to work. And so I kind of, you know, I think maybe what happened? I don't know. I just got real frustrated. So this is where the manifesting my happiness comes into play. So like I told you before, it was always important for me to be happy. And it had come to a point at my job my part-time part job that I wasn't happy anymore. I couldn't stand to go to work. It kind of started to feel like Kansas City, not as severe, but I could recognize those feelings starting to resurface. And for me, that's a red flag. It's like, okay, girl, you gotta get out of here. But in me feeling that way, I wasn't doing anything about it. I would complain about my job and go to work with not the best attitude, but I wasn't doing anything about it. So, one thing that I had to learn and one thing that I try to put into practice now is not complaining as much. And if I do complain, what are you doing to change the situation? What am I doing to change the situation? And this applies to anywhere in life, not just your job, but what, what am I, why are you complaining if you're not going to do anything about it? Because you're complaining, but you're not doing anything. So it's, it seems as if 
you want to be there. It seems like you like being there, right? So no, I did not like being there. But I was, like I said, I wasn't doing anything about it. I wasn't trying to change my situation. All I was doing was sitting there complaining. I was kind of doing job apps, not going as hard as I could. So then something kind of switched in me. I think I had reached my wits end. Like I was like, okay, enough is enough. So what did I do? Number one, I kind of started to get back into my Bible, back into my devotion, back into daily prayer. If you're not a spiritual person, that's that's on you. But for me, in my household, I am. So I started to get back into that. And also, what else happened? Oh, I was on a trip with my friend Raven with her family, and we're like pretty close. So our family's like her family. Her family's like my family. So we're all so we're all pretty close knit. And around that time, like my mom had just experienced like two deaths on um, her dad's side of the family and I personally was kind of getting stressed out because there were, were goals that I wanted to reach financially but I couldn't do that working in my current position and I was kind of coming to a point of frustration because nothing was like working in my favor and so I think it was like a Sunday morning when we were on the trip like I'm brushing my teeth and I'm playing gospel music greater is coming comes on and I just like I'm in the shower like bawling crying like I could not stop crying and I was brushing my teeth and I started crying, still crying. And so her family, they're also kind of, they're pretty like heavy into religion and spirituality. And so they decided to have a um, Sunday, like a little devotion type thing. So I went downstairs with her mom and her dad and her cousin and her husband were there. And we all just kind of gathered and what happened? I don't remember what happened or what was said but I don't know if they said like does anybody need to be prayed for or if I just felt compelled to say something but I was just like you know I'm really trying to find a new job you know I was worried about my mom like mom's pretty a strong a pretty strong person so I I mean she was affected by the deaths but I she never she never really told me how she felt but I was just worried about her because it was a lot and it was really like close together that it was my mom it was my own personal things going on and it just kind of became a lot because I just tried to ignore it and not address it and so her cousin started to pray for me and just speak over me and then her dad they're very heavy into spirituality and religion and I don't I don't let anybody pray over me because I don't play with the Lord and everybody is not godlike. but I trust her parents and her family to do that for me. So um, her dad like sold a seed to me. He handed me like $20, I think. It was also that weekend that I decided that I wasn't gonna, sh I'm a shopper. Always have been, always will be. I think it just runs in my family. Like my mom was a shopper, my grandma was a shopper. Like her mother was a shopper. Like it's just in me. I said that day, that weekend, I was like, this is my last weekend shopping until I get a new job. Because I felt like I needed to get serious about something and show God that I'm willing to give something up that I love to do in order to be elevated to the next level, right? So Raven's dad has show, sold a seed into me. I decided to fast from shopping. Um, I started going really hard with applications. I was doing at least 10 applications a day, if not more. I was reaching out to people who may be with opportunities within the healthcare system because I figured out what it is that I wanted to do. Maybe like June, maybe? Maybe June, I can't remember. I think it was around June. And so I'm still working, still applying, and then what happens next? So me and four of my friends went to New Orleans for my birthday. And on the last day of my birthday trip, we had dinner and everybody, all my friends, these are like some of the people that are like closest to me. All of my friends went around and just kind of like spoke into me, spoke life over me. I, we were really drunk, so I didn't really cry. But had I had been a little bit more sober, I probably would have started crying because all the friends that I have, like, it's literally like family now. Like, my friends that are females are like my sister. So it meant a lot for them to um, take the time to even travel with me. And then for them to speak so highly of me really meant a lot to me. And they've been a very instrumental part of me kind of getting back to being happy they were there when I quit my job when I was unhappy I'm not actually when I was unhappy with my job I'm not even gonna lie to you a few of them we did not even talk because let's just say when you're unhappy it starts to permeate throughout different parts of your life and 
but that's another story for another day they i will say this they saw the effects of my happiness firsthand but they've also seen as you know i kind of got back to myself after quitting and they saw me kind of working towards whatever it is that i wanted to do and they supported me as i figured that out um, yeah they just that my friends have just definitely shown up for me in the past few years and i'm beyond appreciative of that so my birthday's in november and then I either got the call right before my birthday or right after my birthday to come and do an interview. It was an interview with the, one of the healthcare systems in Charlotte. So, oh, it was right, no, it was right, this is what happened. The interview was right before my birthday. I remember because it was right after homecoming and I was sick in my interview. So I did the interview before New Orleans. And so then I came back so I did the interview before New Orleans. I went to New Orleans with my friends. They were speaking over me. Da, 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 da. So we come back. I don't remember how long after, but they called me and was like, you got the job. The job was part-time, but I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to take what I can get because you just never know. And I vividly remember texting my friends and telling them that I had got the job and just thanking them for supporting me during this time. And also, I made mention of the fact that it was part-time. I was like, but I'm going to take it anyway because you never know what it could turn into. So I was in November and then like, you know, after that, like I was just like lit, like I'm hyped, like I'm finally working in healthcare. It's a people facing role, like, oh, it's lit. Like, December, I finished, like by, I'm still at my old job, still don't like it, but I kind of have a new attitude towards it because I know I'm not going to be here for long. So it's like, whatever, let me come in and do it, you know. So I didn't really quit my old job, but I just, I took time off to do the training for my new job. And so I started that job um, the first Monday of the year. First Monday of January, so January 6th. Oh wait, let me let me rewind. So I told y'all I have to get back more into my journaling and my prayers and all that more spiritual stuff. And then I had Raven's dad speak over me and then I had to, and so into me. Then I had gave up shopping, which I did pretty well with, but um, homecoming and my birthday, I bought just a few pieces. I didn't, that was all I had bought, um, just a few things for both of those events. Then I had my, the interviews and I had my friends. And so, you know, things were kind of working in my favor, but the end of the year kind of ended rough for just me personally. And just for my friends, it was just kind of a lot. So by the end of the year, I was more than ready for the new beginning that would be this new job. Like, I didn't really think about, what, what am I trying to say? I didn't really think about how it would affect me or what it would do for me. But again, the end of the year, just December was a wild month. Like it was just a rough emotional month, um, you know, people around me. And so again, by the time January came, I was more than ready for this new opportunity that was just a breath of fresh air because 2019 really wasn't like, like it was cool, but it wasn't like, that lid, like, especially the end, like the end was just enough to ruin the whole year. So um, I go to the job. Uh, what happened was my training got pushed back. And so, cause you're supposed to go to a more formal training before you go on the job. But my new manager was like, well, since your training got pushed back, so what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to do your training first and then you shadow on the job. And she was like, well, since your training got pushed back, do you want to come and shadow for two weeks? And I was like, oh, okay, sure. Cause I had already taken the time off of work to do so. And so I wasn't going to be making any money anyway. So I was like, yeah, let me just go here and do this. I go, I'm training. Um, my preceptor's teaching me everything I need to know. I'm starting to do things on my own. Da, da, da. So the Thursday, this was, I did the training for two, the shadowing for two weeks. So the Thursday of the second week, um, my manager called me into the office and she was like, um, you know, when you took on this role, you knew it was part-time, but she was like, but in your interview, you know, I told you, you know, if opportunities open up, we offer it to our team first. And she was like, I have an opening for a 7.30 to 4 p.m. full-time position. Would you like it? And I was like, um, yes. Like, what do you mean? And I was like, yes. And that day, I think I went home and cried. Like, it's just amazing how God works. Like that job was supposed to be part-time, number one. Number two, I wasn't even supposed to be there at that time. I was supposed to be in the formal training and not on site, but because I was on site and they were able to see 
how I work, I was able to get a full-time position. And I remember I told you guys that I mentioned it to my friends that I was gonna take it regardless because I had turned down a full-time position at the hospital before. Um, well, I turned down an interview for the position before. So yeah, I took it and it turned into full-time. So all my, every, all the steps that I took beforehand leading up to this, you know, me wanting a change in life and me doing what's necessary to change, that yeah, paid off. And now I absolutely love my job. I work with an amazing team. Like I could not ask for a better team. Like it's literally the complete opposite of the environment that I left in Kansas City. Um, it's the job that I want to do. Like me and my mom, when I first met me and my mom would go back and forth so bad about me denying, me not even applying for certain things. Cause I would tell, I said, it, from the description, I don't want to do this. And she was like, you just never know what it is. Which she was not incorrect. But I wasn't even going to waste my, if it didn't, I knew I had the vision of exactly what I wanted to do in, in healthcare. I knew what it was. I knew what it looked like. And we would get into it so bad about it. And not like my mom was trying to force me to do anything. That's not that case by any means. She just saw how unhappy I was. And she just wanted the best for me. And she wanted better for me. And she kind of, I think she kind of felt like <clears throat> by me not applying for jobs or, you know, not even trying that wasn't taking it seriously. Maybe, I don't know. You'll, we'll have to ask her how she felt, but I was just so thankful because this is exactly what I wanted to do. My team is amazing. My management is amazing. Opportunity for growth is amazing. So I couldn't have, and it, it was things that I didn't even pray for. I didn't even think about the type of team, the type of people that I'll be working with. I was just worried about the job. So for me to be so blessed with that team, I, I go to work every day super duper thankful. And especially coming from where I came from. And I guess I'll use that point as a segue to kind of transition into the next part. <laughs>